According to my guest today, Martin van Opstal, true healing means to liberate yourself from any burden. While on his own path to healing, he wondered whether this burden had any connection to his long family line. While it seems obvious that we have inherited our ancestors' genes, it might also be true that we are carrying their stories, their dramas, their talents and their energies. Let's hear what he has to say. My name is Thorsten Lüdecke and this is the Wisdom Qigong Uncovered podcast. Martin is quite well known in the community because he's been very active, uh, running various uh, activities, uh, helping many people uh, through different difficult times. I think it was during COVID where we had a lot of things happening on your Qi channel, where you were sharing you know, Qi um, lectures from various teachers with people. And uh, so that's why a lot of people know you. And I thought today we start a little bit with your own personal story and then move to a question that you raised in our pre-conversation and that is something like you know if somebody heals after the healing what is a perfect life to them so i suggest we start with you know, just start with your personal story and then we kind of move into that into that question starting with my personal story um so uh, maybe in the last the last part of your what you said what is a perfect life for me um You know, I'm 57 at this moment. Um, so I feel I'm getting closer to the completion of the first life. And this for me is uh, the perfect life. I mean, when I get to uh, 60 years of living, uh, then I will have completed, what, uh, according to what Ch Chinese say, a one, a one life cycle, complete life cycle. Um, so if you think back about how about these different years. So let's say 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and be before 10 and even before birth. Um, it's much, it's too much to, to share. It's, it's, but each different time zone, let's say time part has a specific meaning to everyone's life. So everyone can relate to the 20 year old person, 30 year old person, and so on. So, Uh, at this moment, what comes together in my life, let's say, is uh, living partly in Italy, which is, uh, as you mentioned before we started, um, do you like enjoy living there? And so I'm, I'm living my dream in a way. Um, since five years old, I was a child who climbed. Even I was at two, at two years old, they picked me up, the, up of the, the beach because I was climbing something in the uh, on the beach. And so I've always been climbing mountains, everything that involves a natural living. Um, so when I, when I say now at this moment, I feel like I've realized uh, something that together with uh, my wife, we live and our dog, we live uh, very close to the wilderness, a very unknown uh, uh, area of, of Italy, which is uh, going to Switzerland. And this area uh, is called Val Grande. Uh, Val Grande means uh, Great Valley or something like this. It's very rough. It's very tough. Um, I, pref I prefer that side. If I look outside of my, out of my window, I look to the to the Porsche, Porsche uh, cities of Stresa, which is uh, you know a little bit uh, old style, classic, but also uh, very modern to Italian style living. And uh, so. From one side, my dream is to live in a place where it can be in nature. Other side is to be active, which means I can practice my body. This is very close to become to, to Qigong. Um, and, and also I can, if I have friends, I can go to the more social parts. I also like social life. I've been full, my life has been full of social activities, deprived from social activities due to illness. Um, but my dream is to go back to a place where I can do this. Um, so I'm also living partly in Belgium. This is where I do most of my sharing of my experience, teaching, 
uh, my work. So this is a, in a short short way to tell where it come to to this moment is to be able to have the mental, emotional, and physical, of course, uh, capacity, capability to realize this uh, at this moment. Um, so a healing story. Um, you know, my whole life has been full of healing and has been full of working. And uh, it's only recent, really recent, the last few months. Um, I feel great gratitude from the heart. And I feel, you know, when you talk about spleen or talk about body, everything comes back to the body. And uh, for the first time since a very long time, maybe childhood, I feel like I'm home in my body. So regardless the damage, the, the thing that has been happening due to medical stuff, the desires I have to continue to live even with kidney failure, um, it doesn't matter right now. It's just being grateful, feeling the gratitude, and feeling a deeper peace within. So, yeah, um, healing exists, as it is on my personal part. And being able to share that with others makes it meaningful. Meaningful. Okay, that's it. <laughs> yes. So you 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 spoke about um, the kidney failure uh, that you were experiencing. Is that yeah. kind of the um, the the main issue you had to deal with in your life, or is there other th other things? Um, and how did you go about solving these issues with Jinang Qigong? Okay, so there's actually two two aspects or two two questions in one. One is what is the let's say the foundation of my physical life, um, and due to or let's say my personal uh, study, um, I have I have gone backwards uh, in my life, and even generations back, even to three four generations back. So. Uh, Again, as a child, I was already interested in in what um, about my parents, about my grandparents, about their parents, and I was the youngest in both my families as a child, and also the sixtieth grandchild in the two two bloodlines coming together. So this is the large family. Uh, um, so this uh, made me always looking backwards or up to the to the people before me, and um, so this. This uh, came after, not only before, but also after I was diagnosed with a kidney failure. Um, I became even more interested in the, let's say, genes, you know, genetic DNA, also in the epigenetics. So it means what influences one's, one's health, you know, one's physical health. Um, but to be honest, uh, the physical health is, is just... It is, you know, like you have a body, uh, your feet are maybe 45, 44 size, your eyes have a color, you have a certain uh, certain way of moving. And uh, often you are referred to as you act exactly like your grandfather or your grandmother or the aunt of so much. And um, this means um, we, we receive the body from our ancestors genetically. Um, this we cannot change. So when I rose above, of, let's say, the physical aspect of kidney failure, it, it helped me to look beyond uh, the disease as a medical medical problem. It helped me to accept a certain... Um, no, it helped me accept my body. So I was only ready uh, at a certain point when they put a needle inside my back to say, this is a piece of kidney we're going to take. I knew I would live without kidney replacement therapy. This was in back in 98. So when I was lying in hospital, I realized um, my life from my physical point is more or less finished because I need to do something else with my body to keep myself alive. So it was very much physically uh, focused. But at the same time, physically, I also realized that I cannot think, I cannot feel, experience life without my body. So the body became like something to exercise, something to train 
after I received the transplant. And um, I became very enthusiastic, very driven to to go into business again. I was a I was a, an organization uh, advisor at that moment, and uh, I get, I had some successes. I even went to South Africa. I went to Mozambique. I went to places where not many people come, ex- especially not with a kidney uh, transplant. So when I start building my physical again, immediately. I was confronted with the, the mental and emotional mirror of what happened. And so uh, being a psychologist, um, I was I was I had an advantage to to be a psychologist. And my clients refer to me as your business aspect is good, but your personal aspect is much better. So uh, this is how I moved slowly, slowly into uh, psychology into sharing experiences from the from the energy level, emotional level. And uh, I had big confrontations at that time with my physical because medical um, medical cannot help you uh, to give back your health. Even if you have uh, full full health, you know, like everything 100%, um, I realized that there was a big risk to be a big risk. So I need to go back to what is the meaning of my life? And uh, so I was just talking 20, 10, 20, 30, 40. I was in the 40s already when I met Qigong teachers. Um, so Jineng Qigong has played an incredible important part in my life. Uh, let's say the teachers played an important part in my life, but I already had 40 years of experience in, in life. So uh, this is different than uh, the teachers who, who, of course, went to to colleges at 80 or younger, the tradition. Um, but nevertheless, um, I picked uh, I picked up the the knowledge. I realized there was this was my way to go, and also I realized to integrate uh, to to awareness, so to create me- mind, emotion, body cannot separate. They're always, they're always one. If you're just talking about energy, energy is just a, you know, a, a modality, you know, like electricity. But chi, wow, I was, I couldn't, I couldn't repeat what the teachers were saying. When Yung Tung, Yung Tung Liu was talking to me, one part was I couldn't reproduce anything. <laughs> so I said, oh no, I know what he's talking about, and then I started to try to explain, or and I couldn't. It just went all in. It was just the time to absorb uh, Jineng Qigong in the, at the, my beginning 40s and, and so, so on. We have a way you can discover Qigong. So at the Jineng Qigong Student Hub, we know that understanding Qigong is very important. And also that Jineng Qigong in itself has various nuances that people can't easily comprehend. So we've approached it in the style of a video game. On this page, Discover Qigong, you can select your character. So you can either be a beginner, a practitioner, or a holistic healer or self-healer. And you click on your character and it takes you to these different sections. In these sections, you can explore the nuances. And when you click on a card, um, all of the resources pop up and we've made it really fun and not many people know about it. So if you are interested, have a look and discover Qigong. I think it's it's very interesting how you describe your journey because it seems that initially when you were confronted with the bodily issues, you did separate your body from your mind and from your emotions. And it is like, oh, I have to do something with my body now in order to heal the body. And then later on, the emotional side and the mental side came up and you dealt with them. And it seems that uh, through Huan Tong Liu, you and Shineng Qigong, you realize, no, it's all one. And um, and in a way, it's, um, you know, I, I remember when you started the conversation, you said, this is the first time in my life where I actually, uh, how did you put it? 
where I live fully in my body or so, something like that. I'm not sure whether I'm qu quoting you correctly. So uh, it seems that, you know, after all those years, it has come finally come together uh, as one, um, accepting the whole. Is that uh, fair accepting. to say? Or Yeah, yes. okay, yes. cool. And, uh, yes. and uh, living in the body means I have fully accepted my body. I fully accepted the curses, the blessings, everything that came with my conception. And this is a, a part that came later. So first with Jin Eng Qigong, then I met another teacher from, a Taoist teacher from, a master from, he lives in the United States, but he's, uh, he's from China. And uh, one, one piece I couldn't, I couldn't figure out. I, I just couldn't figure out. And it was the relationship I talked about before with the ancestors. Right. How do the ancestors are part of our body? You know, we know from people that have lived through slavery four generations ago, uh, now they still feel what happened in the f in four generations ago. Um, so I was not used to that. You know, I didn't grow up in, in such a situation. But I had many reasons to, to go back and to understand their lives. And not only their lives, but what I realized is that their qualities, you know, their personal qualities of each Uh, father, mother, uh, great, uh, or grandfather, great, great grandmother, so on. So 14 in total are actually very well connected to the qualities of our energy being. And this I, might, I, I probably have to explain further on because it's, maybe it's too big a subject, but it's a big subject to replace I your, 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 your ancestors into an energy. I, I'd like to hear about it because uh, what you said initially is something I think that all of us can understand. When you said, yeah, when you're given your body and, for example, I've got blue eyes, they don't come out of nowhere. They come through my ancestors. So uh, if we if we take this idea, then it's not too far-fetched to say that we're also carrying other things from our ancestors in our you know in our life and in who we are so i think it's a great topic and i'd love to hear more about it from you and you know, how you see that please okay so to give you a little bit of an idea and i give it from my because we started from my personal perspective as a as a healing story um i think the the, the true healing for everyone for anyone is um you know to liberate yourself from any burden you know If you still have the backpack with stones, if you fit at this moment in your life, we're just sitting talking, you still feel I'm I'm doing a lot of work. I cannot free myself. I, can, I cannot feel happy. I cannot feel without any reason to feel joyful or grateful. I always need to do something. So it always involves action, you know, energy plus action. Uh, so we need to be, to be able to feel yourself free is, uh, is, is for some people, it's very difficult because they always carry the burden. So this burden, how can we liberate ourselves from? So, and I spend a lot of time on the bloodline story, you know, bloodlines, uh, ancestor genes, uh, talking about this. And then I realized that uh, when, we, when we always do something, we use, you know, we use the hands, for example. Is it my hand that I use? Or is it the hand of my grandfather or grandmother? You know, if you always like to do physical work, there's a good chance that the physical work comes from an ancestor who liked to work as well with their hands. Artists, for example, you know, if you, oh, now I know because my grandmother was also interested in painting or something like this. So our hands, they are very related what we, to our mind. So also our mind is very Uh, what we think, how we behave, what we feel, our emotions are, are all related to what happened before. Before, So um, I don't have children, so I'm not going to pass uh, anything like blessings or curses to the next generation. The good thing is uh, I don't need to, so I, I, I am free to do what I want to. And it means um, I have to solve any problem. I have in my life, myself, or any good thing, any celebration. Normally, you go celebrate with your children or your family, and we do it together. We have a small group. But the interesting part is, and this is maybe referring to the Jineng Qigong community, 
there was once a teacher who said to me, I went away, it's a big teacher, you know, like hundreds of people go to his retreats in China. He said, once I went to, away from my family and I went to the Jinning Qigong community, I realized, oh, this is, this is my real, real family. This is where it's not so, because I asked, why don't you go back to your family? What happened? It was a difficult question. And he said, mm. well, basically, the family story is very difficult, complicated. So when we feel liberated in our community, we feel free to be who we are. This is also all the qualities you receive and give in this community are still related to your ancestors. Because maybe, you know, one grandmother, she had an unfortunate life. Or she had a great grandfather who, you know, there was war, there was famine, there was uh, maybe happened to them, happened something which has, has changed their desires, their way, and to be free in themselves. And this was given through generation of generation to the next generation. So I know this sounds very, very deep and very far fetched, but uh, it's very immediate, you know, like, what do you feel when you do something, if you take a decision? How do you take the decision? Is it very easy to take decision or do you have to pass the board, you know, the board of invisible people that you have inside yourself? Or maybe uh, the friends that represent this uh, quality that help you to, to build confidence, the trust in your life. And uh, I realize that uh, that this uh, trust many people uh, lack. They ha don't have the trust because they cannot find this group or community. And that's why the community of Zineng Chigung or any other community you might have um, is very important. And to add one more thing is that originally we lived in family structures, you know, like, like in Africa, uh, big family structures. So everyone is being taken care of in their own, when they're sick, when they're healthy, when they're young, when they're old. Uh, this we, we have lost. This we have lost. So we need to find a way and uh, the people around us that built this structure for us to be able to live a, let's say, a good life. Yes. Now, when you talk about um, the, the communities, and you you mentioned the Chinang Qigong community as an example, um, and that this kind of takes the role of the family structure that we used to have in, in former times, um, would you say this is because you share certain things with the community or is it because you know like one of them the characteristics of jineng qigong is the idea of open heart open mind which means we are very accepting and it it means we are you know open to understand you no matter where you come from and how you are we are we, we welcome you with an open heart um Uh, or why would you think, you know, that the Chinang Chi community in, in your case plays such an important role and not, you know, some local football club or something like that? Yeah, but that's the whole thing. It can be anything, you know, even if you live in nature, the nature becomes your community. Yeah. Uh, and so it has no form. But as soon as it becomes a form, it often reminds us of patterns we had in the, in the past, right? So we open ourselves to others. Um, or we say, as a group, we say, welcome in our group. Um, and um, this resemb resembles a lot about how we were received in our own family. You know, our conception, which is the most determining moment of our life, takes place uh, four years before we even, you know, have any, any uh, awareness or any thinking about it. But a lot, the most important growth is between conception and the first six months of uh, growth. Because uh, then we get our, our body. That's where when our body is. So, so the whole body is already completed before we are even aware of it. Um, so, and this is not just a body. It also includes the emotions, you know, like, like through Qigong, we know. 
uh, or Chinese TCM we know, vital organs, emotions, elements, colors, every, anything that uh, comes to our feeling body. Let's call it a feeling body. So when we are accepted by the community, it means something can connect. Qi, you know, Qi is connection, you know, it's just uh, energy flowing. When it flows, oh, we feel, okay, this is, this is, maybe I want to spend some time with this family, with this community. Um, but it pays off to reflect what is the quality of this connection. I mean, not like a high or low, but I mean, what is exactly what you're getting turned on? You know, why do I, why am I excited or why I suddenly feel so sad or angry or to, to, to study the deeper layers of the emotions to the vitality of our life. And this is, this is a, it's a, it's, it's a long work, you know, <laughs> before you realize what, what, where do I, my lungs come from? What is the emotion of sadness and where did it, did it connect in the back, in the, in the background or backwards? Um, sometimes we we think it's because of me. Most of the time, you know, we like to to say it's it's to me. It's I, I'm the one who's going to do. But many emotions they go back to hundreds of years. They're still in our body. They still have the residue of what happened, or famine, or hunger, or war. You know, that goes back maybe to 1600. You don't know. And this makes uh, life spectacular. A surprising, a wonder, a miracle, and um, the only thing we need to do the work, because that's the qigong, is to need to do the work to go through all the emotions, to go through all the um, physical and emotional, and to go beyond this of this. If if you can go beyond, is always said by many teachers, go beyond. You know, like standing for two hours like this, and then uh, experience everything. But always have the blue sky chi feel. How many minutes can I stand like this without thinking? You know, without uh, starting to 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 the, the ego starting to say, "Oh, you know, lower your arms now." And so, how many? How much time of the two hours can we spend beyond? So this means true liberation. It's very safe because it's qigong. It's not. It's not dangerous to the body because. It's not dangerous to any to the psyche to the psyche even because when we want to stop we will stop when we think it's dangerous when it's painful uh, we will stop and at least with qigong training we can we can say pain that is good pain that's not good you know um, so this so through the qigong energy qi through the relationships we have with around and within uh, flowing or not flowing or opening we realize something very special, and that is that um, without even really knowing why, suddenly the emotions start changing into a positive one. Even the sadness, you know, crying with a smile. A little bit of anger is good because it motivates us. Oh, you're getting more anger. Okay, do a practice. It takes six hours for the body to settle down. Okay, more acceptance. And uh, so even without really knowing exactly what happened in that time, but it pays off to study where do you come from? Where's my emotion come from? Where's my, what can I do? And the, the reason I say it is because you can become more conscious, aware, free. The body I cannot change, but I know now that I can, I can change. I can do something very powerful yes now we don't always have the um, possibility to know enough about our ancestors to know that three generations away maybe my grandma had to go through hardship because of a famine or something like that for example in my family i can hardly go one generation or two generations backwards uh, because i don't have the information um, so, so I think it's great to, to explore that and wherever you can find out something about the family, that can be very useful because it's
it might resonate and then you see okay well maybe this is where my emotion comes from this is why i sometimes feel like it exactly. but again you know not all of us have the possibility to go very far uh so what you're suggesting here also with uh your qigong exercises and you were mentioning you know an exercise like three centers merge where you're just standing for two hours and basically whatever comes up comes up and your emotions and so on it is by dealing with these emotions and being very um accepting that you might also let go things that are not your your own or that you haven't acquired in your own lifetime let me put it like this they are their, your own because they got from your you got them from your your ancestors but you haven't necessarily acquired them in your lifetime they can be coming you know from past generations right yes so Yeah, from, from what you say, there's two things, you know. First of all, resonating. And that word I remember. Second is uh, to go back, not to blame your ancestors, you know. This is right. the opposite. Uh, but it often happens that we, if we're not aware, you know, unconsciously, we start to blame maybe not even your ancestor. Maybe you start blaming a neighbor or somebody passes in the street instantly. This is uh, also related to... Where do you come from? What is my bloodline? Um, and also you said, um, I don't know my my generation before. So how can I connect? So some people, this, this you know, you have methods, techniques. Qigong is just a technique. You go back to the ancestor, meditate on, the, on your ancestor that you didn't know. Not everybody, not everybody, 14, you know, seven on your, on your father's side, seven on your mother's side. Um, maybe you were present when you had your conception. I mean, present in the in your in your bloodline. Maybe didn't the genes didn't express themselves through all of them? Uh, probably just nine or at least two. You know, at least two, because the two bloodlines come together. So when you say I don't know them, at least you can use a technique to go back. I remember very well when I was in China. I was in my shang with uh, Miss Master Liu. We did a meditation on this, even going back before you were born, before conception. So it means a lot. It means a lot to Chinese traditional knowledge. They say, honor your ancestors. Maybe you've heard this before, you know, especially Taoists. They, they say, honor your ancestors. And uh, by honor, honoring, what is the meaning? You know, <laughs> like, uh, do, we, do, we, do we go out and go to the grave? Or do we go out to do a ceremony? Yeah, maybe for you that's working. I don't know. For me, I I use a very simple method. I just use my Qigong knowledge and then went past I passed either each ancestor, went back to a great grandmother, uh, great grandfather, whatever, uh, their their in-laws, you know, how they were married. And uh, I came up with a number of ancestors that I was sure they were playing some role in my life, either through blessing or maybe to less positive but you know it's just energy it doesn't make any any difference so your what you say resonate is very important if it if it resonates it means you still have the connection you still have the energy so even if you're living now you might be experiencing something that, that happened then which is the reson which resonates within your life so this is very important because When you have this feeling, when you bring it back to the core, it's just energy. So how much energy, time do I spend uh, on uh, li living my life for my ancestors or free myself from something that happened in the past? This is only anyone for himself or herself can answer. Hmm. And through Qigong, I learned one important lesson is uh, to take full ownership You know, ownership. You can you cannot blame. You cannot yes. be feel if you feel guilty all the time. It is not what is the. But it's the use of feeling guilty all the time. What's the use of feeling shame? A shame. It's just uh, not feeling free. But no one is going to tell you how to liberate yourself from this. Mm -hmm. So this is taking full ownership to the core, to the deepest practice. How many hours do I need practice to go to back to my owning my life? Yes. That was a very interesting talk, Martin. Um, I think we went uh, on quite a journey, and I think it's the first time that you know I actually had a guest here using these ideas of what 
what is the influence of my anxiousness on me and on my life and who I am. Uh, so that was very, very valuable. And uh, I'm sure our audience has enjoyed it a lot. So I'd like to thank you, Martin, uh, for being our guest today. And uh, yes, and I wish you that you, you know, continue creating this beautiful life you have in Italy right now with your wife and your dog. And I'm sure we'll stay in touch and maybe there's an opportunity for another podcast very soon. Thank you very much, uh, Thorsten, and uh, have a good day. Thank you. We trust you enjoyed this conversation and we invite you to subscribe to our podcast so we can stay in touch and notify you of future episodes. We will end today's episode with the eight verses meditation performed by Chinin Qigong teacher Katrin Hendricks. Enjoy. To get your free ebook on the 8 verses meditation, please check the show notes below.